Okay, so um, we are thinking today about the parable of the lost coin, which is from Luke chapter 15 verses 8 to 10. Now I know we've already had the video, but I'm going to read it to you as well, because it's only three verses long anyway. So, the parable of the lost coin. Jesus gave them another parable. There once was a woman who had ten valuable silver coins. When she lost one of them, she swept her entire house, diligently searching every nook and cranny for that one lost coin. When she finally found it, she gathered all her friends and neighbours for a celebration, telling them, come and celebrate with me. I had lost my precious silver coin, but now I found it. That's the way God responds every time one lost sinner repents and turns to him. He says to all his angels, let's have a joyous celebration for the one who was lost I have found. Now this parable is very similar to um, two that I've talked about before. So one is the lost sheep and one is uh, the parable of the, of the two sons. Um, and even though they talk along the same lines, I think there's still things that we can pull out from this parable. So the first thing that I want to uh, point out or pull out for you is um, in the story, um, the lady has 10 precious coins, 10 precious silver coins. Now in the parable, um, this is um, symbolic of us as people. So if we make a direct uh, comparison, God is the lady in that story and we are those precious coins. And I think the word precious is so important here, precious and valuable, because that's what we are to God. All people are precious and valuable to him. You know, he created us, he loved us. You know, he's our father in heaven. So we are valuable to him. We are so, so precious in his eyes. And in the story, obviously she loses one of those coins or she can't find one of those coins. Um, and so that's like those people that don't know Jesus yet, don't um, haven't chosen to follow him and to have a relationship with him. And now what this lady does, is she doesn't say, oh well, uh, I've still got nine coins um, and goes about her day. She, it says she diligently searches her entire house. It says she swept her entire house, searching every nook and cranny for that lost coin. And that's, that's how God is. You know, if any one of us isn't following him, isn't in a relationship with, with him, he doesn't sort of sit, uh, you know, up in heaven and think, oh, well, they might find me one day or they might not. Um, you know, he, he diligently goes after us. You know, he wants to be in relationship with us. He loves us so much that he, he couldn't, he, would, he, he wouldn't just leave us to maybe find him one day, but probably not. He wants us to know him um, and so he puts people in our paths and you know he um, he uses our life experiences and the things that we see and know to draw us to him um, but what's really important about that as well is because he loves us he doesn't force us to know him and to to love him and be in relationship with us um, I think that's really important to point out because when you love somebody you want them to choose to love you um, you, you don't want someone who feels like they have to love you and f is forced to love you because then it's not true love, it's not real, it's not a choice. So that's why he gave us, as human beings, free choice. It's our choice to choose to love him and to know him. Um, and I think that's really important to point out here. Um, I think something else that's really important to note is that not only does the lady in the story, you know, search every nook and cranny, um, she keeps on searching until she finds that coin. She doesn't search for a little bit and then think, oh well, what's done is done. I've still got nine coins, I don't need any more. Um, you know, she keeps on searching until she's found that coin. And then she calls all her family and her friends in to celebrate with her. And you know, Jesus says, it's like that. He says, that's the way God responds every time one lost sinner repents and turns to him. He says to all his angels, let's have a joyous celebration for the one who was lost. 
I have found. And I think that's so lovely and that just shows how much he loves us. That when we choose to turn to him and choose to be in relationship with him, it's not like that's done and dusted and that's it, great, you know, she's found me, we're, we're friends, we're in a relationship, whatever. You know, he, ce uh, he celebrates, it's a joyous celebration. You know, all the angels in, in, and the saints in heaven are celebrating because that one lost person has found God and has chosen to follow him for the rest of their lives. I think that's so wonderful. That just shows just how important it is to him and how much he cares that he would celebrate when that choice is made. Really exciting. And I think as uh, believers, we should do that too. When we know uh, people have turned to Jesus um, and chosen to follow him, we should celebrate that. It's exciting. It's wonderful. Um, so yeah, so those are the things that I wanted to pull out um, from today's story. Um, remember that you are precious and you are valuable and you are loved by God. And he celebrated the moment you turned to him. And if you haven't done that yet, he's ready and waiting. You know, he's been out looking for you. He knows that you've heard about him now. Uh, he knows that um, you're searching or maybe you're beginning to search and he loves you. He wants that relationship with you and he will continue to pursue you until you make that choice. Okay, so um, I just want to wrap up by praying by, and thanking God that he loves us. Okay. Father God, I just thank you that you love us. Lord Jesus, we are precious in your sight. We are valuable to you. Like that coin that woman had that she lost, it was valuable. It wasn't just any old coin. It was a valuable silver coin. And we're like that to you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, I thank you that you don't just leave us to it on our own and, and on the off chance that we might find you and be in relationship with you. Lord God, you pursue us. You passionately pursue us because you love us, Lord God. And yet, even in your uh, pursuing, Lord Jesus, you don't force us to choose you. You don't force us to be in relationship with you because that's not real love if, if we don't have a choice. So you allow us to have that choice. And Lord Jesus, we choose you. We choose to follow you. We choose to be in relationship with you. And Lord God, I just thank you for all the people um, who do choose you. Lord God, I thank you that you celebrate that. That's so fun and exciting, Lord God, that there's a party every time somebody turns to you. And Lord Jesus, if there's anybody in our lives that we know and love that don't know you yet, Lord God, I just pray that you put people in their paths, Lord God, that will point them to you. Lord Jesus, that they will see things that will point them to you, Lord God. They will hear things that will point them to you. They'll know things that point them to, them to you, Lord Jesus. Use their experiences, Lord, so that they come to know you. Lord Jesus, thank you that you love us so much that you would do all of this to to be with us, Lord God, to have a friendship and a relationship with us. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. Lord God, I lift up um, the month of April to you. Lord God, I pray for um, safety. Lord God, I pray that uh, you keep us safe and healthy and free from COVID, Lord God. I pray that uh, the vaccine continues to roll out safely, Lord Jesus, that, and that cases continue to um, decrease across the country. In your precious name. Amen.